Hey everyone, this is Nancy Ellen with the Crafty Yarn Barn. Today I'm going to show you my newest video tutorial on how to make a baby blanket with Bonnet baby blanket yarn. This one I made for a little girl. So soft and feminine, so nice and because it's just like a little marshmallow. Um, it's pink and it's got a lot of whites and creams to it, so it's a little difficult to see here in this video. But I have some pictures coming up for you to give you a better idea what it looks like all out of double crochet single crochet and it makes a vertical stripe so i'm really excited about this little baby blanket that i'm going to be giving away to someone um, that i know that's about to have a little baby at our church so check out this tutorial beginning to end step by step how you can make this precious little baby blanket with the Bernat baby blanket yarn a lot of information down in the comment section written pattern for you and also don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel there's also the watch later button check that out if you click that button it'll save this video in your watch list where you can come back to it and refer to it as you're making and crocheting this beautiful little baby blanket so let's head up to the craft room and get started These are the materials that we're going to need to complete today's project. I have some Bernat baby blanket yarn. I have my crochet hook. I have some yarn needles or yarn darners and I like these bigger ones when using the baby blanket yarn and I have some scissors. Love these scissors. Check them out. Check the comment section down below. I'll have a list of all of these items for you. Let's talk about the yarn for a moment. I used two of each skein. This first skein I have here, and these are the big skeins, y'all. 300 grams, 220 yards of yarn. These are the big skeins. It's the bulky weight. It calls for a size L, 11 hook. This is the light pink in color. And I also used two of these. This is the Tippy toe print. Oh, I love that. That's cute. Tippy toe print is the color. It has pinks. It's got a lot of khakis built in there in the variegation. Some creams. Check out that. Super sweet, super soft, and very feminine looking. Love this. And this is also the bigger skein, the 220 yards, 300 grams. Four of these total skeins created a blanket that was 35 inches by 49 inches. So a really nice size baby blanket. I think this little baby will be able to use this for a good number of years, even into toddler size. So let's go ahead and get started making the blanket. Pretty easy, step by step. Don't forget y'all to check out the comments down below. I have a lot of information for you as well as links where you can purchase any of these items through our Amazon affiliate. Just know that any purchase does support our channel. So let's go ahead and get started and get crocheting. Okay, to get started, we're gonna make our slip knot. We like to leave a pretty good sized tail. Take your yarn tail and wrap it around your first two fingers and push that yarn tail between that yarn around your fingers and your fingers. Slide your fingers out and grab that little loop that you push through. Hold your yarn and your tail in that loop and pull it tight. And you're just going to put that slip knot right onto your crochet hook and if you grab that tail you can pull it tight and it will fasten up onto your crochet hook. Leave it a little loose where you can move it around onto your crochet hook, the shaft of your crochet hook. Drop the yarn tail. The way I like to hold this bulky yarn is I put it right between my little finger and my ring finger and I just wrap it and let it hang over the top of my hand. It gives a pretty good tension and it helps me hold on to it, that weight of that yarn. It's a little bit bulky, so it helps me hold on to that yarn. So we're gonna grab our hook, and we're gonna put it underneath, and we're gonna grab the yarn right with the hook, the groove of our hook, and we're gonna turn our hook down and pull it right through the slip knot that's on our crochet hook. That's chain one. We're gonna continue on, and we're going to chain 83 chains. Now to make this pattern your foundation chain for those who understand a little bit more advanced your foundation chain needs to be a multiple of six 
plus three additional stitches and then add two for your turning chain. So a total of 83 chains. So that was one and this is two chains and go underneath, turn your hook down that's and pull it through and that's three chains and just go underneath and that's four and five and go all the way up to 83 and I'll see you there in just a moment. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet in the US is the same as a treble crochet in the UK. So you're going to count to your fourth chain, so one, two, three, four. And to do a double crochet, we're going to go underneath the yarn, grab our yarn and let the yarn catch in the groove of that hook. We're going to put our hook into the fourth chain from the hook, and we're going to go underneath, yarn over, and grab that yarn and let it catch in the groove, and we're going to pull it back through that foundation chain. And that leaves three loops on your hook. What you're going to do now is you're going to yarn over, go underneath that yarn, now you're going to turn your hook downward and let it catch in the groove and you're going to pull that yarn through the first two loops on your hook. It's going to leave two loops left. Now you're going to yarn over, go underneath, grab that yarn, turn your hook downward and pull it through the last two loops on your hook and it leaves one loop left. Now you're going to the next foundation chain and you're going to do one more double crochet. Treble crochet in the UK, double crochet in the US. You're going to go underneath the yarn, turn your hook downward and put your hook into the foundation chain. You're going to go underneath that yarn and you're going to pull it back through the foundation chain, leaving three loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn your hook downward and pull it to the first two loops on your hook. Go underneath, yarn over and pull the yarn through the last two loops on your hook. That made two double crochet. Now we're going to chain three. So chain one, chain two, and chain three. Now we're going to look at our foundation chain and we're going to skip three chains. This is the chain that we just did our double crochet, our last one. So we're going to skip one, two, three. And now into this fourth chain, we're going to put a double crochet. And we're going to do three double crochet, one of those into each chain. So that was the first one. We're going to do, skip to the next chain. We're going to do another double crochet. And we're going to go to the next chain and do another double crochet. Now we're going to chain three. And we're going to skip three chains. One, two, three. And right into the fourth one, we're going to do a double crochet. Now we're going to go into the next chain and we're going to do a double crochet. And do another double crochet into the next chain. You're going to chain three. And you're going to skip three chains here on the bottom foundation. So that's one, two, three, and into the fourth chain you're going to do a double crochet. And then you're going to do two more, one into the next one, and then into the next chain, foundation chain, you're going to do another double crochet, and you're going to do this all the way down. You're going to put three double crochet, you're going to chain three, and you're going to skip three chains. And then to the next three chains on your foundation, you'll put a double crochet into each one. You'll chain three, skip three chains on your foundation, and into the fourth chain, you'll do three more double crochet into the next three chains. And you're going to do that all the way down. What you're doing is you're making these chain three spaces. And when we come back the other way, we're going to crochet into those spaces. And I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. So work your way all the way down your foundation. And we'll see you at the end of your foundation chain in just a few moments. Okay, we've made it all the way down to the end of our foundation chain. And we have one foundation chain left. This is where we're going to change our colors. I see now that I made a little bit of mistake. I should have bought darker contrasting colors to help in this tutorial to 
uh, give a little more contrast so you can see. So I'm sorry about that. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and yarn over and start our double crochet. We're going to put our hook into the last foundation. We're going to yarn over and pull our hook through. And then we're going to yarn over and pull it through the first two loops. We're leaving two loops left. Then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my yarn. I'm going to go ahead and clip off this yarn to make a leave a pretty good sized yarn tail. And what I'm going to do here is grab my yarn that I'm going to add, leave a little bit of a tail, and I'm just going to make a little loop with my finger there. See, all I'm going to do is wrap it over my finger and leave a little loop. This is where I'm going to grab with my crochet hook. And I'm going to pull this yarn through the last two loops on my hook. Okay, and that finishes off that double crochet. So I have my yarn tail from my original foundation, my yarn tail from my first row where I just cut it, and now I have my pink that I've added. I have the yarn tail from the pink, and then I've got the skein of yarn here attached. And we'll work our yarn tails in just a moment. I hate leaving those when I'm making a project. I do like to work them in as I make the yarn tails because I like to see a finished project as I go. I don't like all those yarn tails hanging about. And I hate doing that at the very end with lots of yarn tails to sew at the end. When I finish my project, I want to finish it. I don't want to have to deal with yarn tails. So that's my little pet peeve, by the way. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn our work and we're going to go back the other way. So we're going to put our project this way and we're going to go back the other way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three chains and we're going to make spike double crochet. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to make three double crochet. One, into each of the three foundation chains that we had skipped earlier. We're going to crochet around this first row here. This is going to be actually, these chains are going to be hidden in our work here in just a minute. So we're going to yarn over and to make our spike double crochet, it's going to sort of be like a elongated double crochet a little bit in that it's a little bit taller. So don't be so tight with your tension on your hook, okay? So yarn over now put your hook into the very first of those foundation chains three that we skipped. So right into that loop and you're going to go back into the back of your work and you're going to grab that yarn and you're going to pull it through that loop. Okay, And then you're going to kind of get it a little loose where you give it a little bit of an extra yarn there. Get it, just don't be so tight with your tension. Okay, you see how it's a little bit longer? So yarn over and pull it through the first two loops and then yarn over and pull it through the next two loops. So grab your yarn, yarn over, and you're going to go into the next foundation chain that you had skipped earlier. You're going to put your hook through that foundation and you're going to grab the yarn and pull it through. And see what's happening is you're losing that chain into the middle of your work. Now you're going to yarn over, pull it through the first two loops, and then pull it, yarn over and pull it through the second two loops. Now we have one more foundation chain here that we had skipped earlier. So yarn over and put it through that foundation. Yarn over and grab your, your yarn, pull it through, and we're going to yarn over and pull it through the first two loops, and then yarn over and pull it through the second two loops. So we're going to do chain three, one, two, three and you're going to yarn over, you're going to skip these three double crochet right here, and you're going to put a spike double crochet into each of these three foundation chains that we had skipped earlier, crocheting around row one here. So yarn over, put it right into that foundation chain, come back behind and grab your yarn, pull it through, and you're going to yarn over, pull it through the first two loops, yarn over and pull it through the second two loops. And you're going to put another spike double crochet into the next foundation chain, and one more into the very next foundation chain right here. And you're going to chain three, 
and you're going to go all the way down to the end of the row and see what it looks like right now. I wish I had picked a darker color. Let's see if I can change the color a little bit. No, wrong way. So that you can see. All right. So I chained three, and now I'm going to do three more double crochet, three spike double crochet. One into each of these chains, chain three, and then three more, all the way down to the end of your row, and stop at the end, and I'll show you how to finish off this second row, change your colors back, and start back the other way. So I'll see you here in just a few minutes. Okay, now we're at the end of row two. We did three spike double crochet into the foundation, and now what we have left is our last two double crochet plus the turn and chain. So we're gonna chain two, so one, two. Now we're gonna do a slip stitch into the very top of that turn and chain. So here's double crochet, one, two, and then the next stitch is actually the very top of the turn, turn and chain. We're gonna stick our hook through that stitch and to know that you're in that stitch you've got two pieces of yarn here and on the back of your hook you've got one piece of yarn there so you know you're right in the middle of that stitch you should not crochet into the space because it's going to make the side of your blanket a little bit wonky it's not going to be a straight edge so put your hook right into the top of that turning chain you're going to yarn over and pull your hook through and then you're going to go ahead and pull that loop through your hook on your on your yarn. So that's a slip stitch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change our color, turn around and go the other way. So now we need to go ahead and turn our work because we're going to go back the other way. And I want to go ahead and cut that pink, leave a little bit of a tail and move that yarn out of the way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our other yarn. This is the yarn color that we started with our foundation and row number one. So I'm just going to leave a bit of a yarn tail and I'm going to take the yarn and just lay it over my index finger and where it may, if I pull out my finger it just leaves a tiny little loop there. So I'm just folding it over. We're going to fold it over and we're going to take your hook and we're going to grab that little loop off of your finger and we're going to pull it through the slip knot. And once you've turned your work, if you seem like the slip knot's getting a little loose, just grab the tail and pull it tight onto your crochet hook. Then you're going to chain three. So chain one, two, and three. That chain three is going to count as a double crochet. Now look at the stitches in the row beneath, skipping this chain three right here and you're going to go down into the first double crochet that you see and you're going to put your stitch right into the top of it. Now it's a spike double crochet so remember to pull up a little bit, yarn over and pull it through the first two loops then yarn over and pull it to the second. Now you're going to yarn over and go into that next double crochet in the row beneath and do your spike double crochet, chain three you're going to skip these next three spike double crochet and you're going to put three spike double crochet into the row beneath and you continue that pattern all the way to the end of your row chain three three spike double crochet chain three three spike double crochet to the end and I'll show you how to finish the row change your colors and start your new row in just a moment now we're down to the end of the row I've already chained three. Now I just need to do my three spike double crochet into the next three on the row beneath. So I'm going to go ahead and do my three spike double crochet. And so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go right into the top of that turning chain. Now the, you have two tails hanging here. If it got a little bit loose, you just all you need to do is pull those tails and it'll tighten up. You're going to yarn over and pull it through the loop. 
you've got three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull it through the first two loops, and there you're going to stop. This is where we're going to do our color change. So we're going to get our scissors, leave a pretty good sized yarn tail. I'm going to clip that yarn. Now we're going to get our other color, our pink. We're just going to fold it over our finger and just make a little loop. We get our crochet hook, stick it through that loop, and we're going to pull that through both loops that are on our hook. Now we're going to turn our work. We'll chain three and we'll continue on. Throughout your project, you're going to continue to repeat rows two and three over and over till you get to the length that you desire for your blanket. What I'll do, if you check the comment section down below, I will put the time stamp for both rows two and row three where you'll be able to go back and refer to it as you need it. The pattern of the chain three and the three spike double crochet is going to become repetitive. I believe the most of the questions you're going to have is for the color changing and your turning chains. So if you need to reference that, see the comment section down below. Go ahead and continue on with your blanket and I'll show you how to fasten off at the end. Finish your final row so it hides these chain three spaces where you don't see those. Tip for you, there's a button at the bottom of the screen where it shows where you can watch later. And you can save this video to your watch list if you need to come back to it. Once you get to the end of your project, you'll wanna see how to finish off this final row and fasten off. And don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you here in just a few minutes. Now we're on the very last row of our blanket. The color that I'm using for our last row should be the same color that we used for our foundation chain in our first row when we first started the blanket. So I've already completed the color change. I've turned my work. Now I'm going to chain two. So chain one, two. At this point, we have been doing spike double crochets into the row beneath. For the last row, we're going to do spike or elongated single crochets. It's normally a turning chain for a single crochet is one chain, but since we're going to elongate or spike that single crochet, we're gonna chain two. Then we're going to put our crochet hook into the first spike double crochet in the row beneath. We're going to yarn over and pull it through and you're gonna have two loops on your hook and you're gonna stretch that yarn up and see how it, it elongated this stitch? Then we're gonna yarn over and pull it through both loops on your hook. Go into the next spike double crochet in the row beneath, <laughs> yarn over and pull it through. Then we're gonna pull up and see how it stretched and pulled that yarn up. We're gonna yarn over and pull it through. Now, normally what we've been doing all along is chaining three at this point. We're going to actually do slip stitches, one into each of the next three spike double crochets. So to do a slip stitch, you go right into the top of that next stitch, you yarn over and pull your hook through, then you're gonna take this loop and you're gonna pull it right through the loop that's on your hook. You're not going to yarn over, so let's do it again. You put your hook through the next stitch, you're gonna yarn over and pull your hook through. You have two loops on your hook, and you're gonna take that first loop and pull it through the second loop. Go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull it through. Now you're gonna pull your hook through the next stitch. Now we're at our next chain three space. So we're gonna do three spike or elongated single crochet. So you go into the row beneath, right in the top of that stitch, you're gonna yarn over, pull your hook up and stretch out, elongating that piece of yarn that's on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull it through. Go into the next stitch, stretch it up a little bit, get a little extra yarn there and pull it through and into the next and pull it through. Now you're going to do three slip stitches and you're going to continue that pattern on all the way down where you'll three slip stitches, then three spike or elongated single crochet, three slip stitches, and so forth and so on, all the way down your 
last row of your blanket and I'll see you at the end to show you how to fasten off and give you a quick tip tutorial how to sew in your yarn tails. Almost completed with our blanket. Okay, we're all the way down to the end of the row and all I have left is the three spike double crochet on the row beneath. To finish up, I'm going to do three spike single crochets in the last three stitches. Now in this last stitch, it looks like it's come apart a little bit. And if it has, where it looks like your stitches have come loose, get that yarn tail and just pull it tight to get that stitch back in place. We're going to take our crochet hook, go right into that last stitch, do an elongated single crochet. And to finish off our work, we just you yarn over and pull that yarn tail all the way through that final single crochet that you made and pull it tight. You're just going to pull your yarn tight. And that finishes off that last stitch. Now we just have a few of our yarn tails left. Like I said earlier, I sew my yarn tails in as I'm crocheting along. So I only have about four left on both sides. As I did my blanket, I sewed them all in so I don't have very much left to do. To sew in your yarn tails, you need a yarn needle or yarn darner. I have a plastic one. Or you can use your crochet hook if you need to. You can put your hook through the loops and just pull your yarn through. It does take longer. It's a little more tedious. I would suggest you get your yarn darners. And the way I do mine, when I sew in my yarn tails, I'll take my yarn needle and I will go three different directions. I'll go this way, I'll make a turn, I'll come back the same way I came, and then I will make a turn and I'll come back the other way. I like to do that because if you're sewing in your yarn tails three different directions, generally if you're pulling on the blanket on the edges or tugging on it, it's not going to pull your yarn tails out. It's not going to expose them. That's what I like to do. That's my preference. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to sew all the way through, hiding my yarn tail into the stitches on this row make a turn, come back, and then turn back again. And that's as simple as that. That's all you need to do to sew in those yarn tails. Once you get your yarn tails done, you're finished with your blanket. I'm not going to do a border on this blanket. That's not the norm for me. I generally like to do borders on all of my blankets, but I love how this finished product came out, um, the finished product, how it looks. So I'm not going to do a border. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to put those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And look at the comments. I'll give you details on the written pattern, how to make this blanket, along with the size of the blanket. Talk to you soon. Be watching for your next video. Bye.